Hey guys, Megan here with Retrite. Um, we just need to do an updated video on some edits uh, for you guys to be able to make on your WordPress websites. Um, when you first log in to your church website, you will be taken to, this is called the dashboard. Um, this is just kind of the easiest way to get to any place on your website, whether you're looking at pages, uh, whether you need to create new forms, upload things to your library, um, put things on the calendar, add a sermon, you can do everything from the dashboard. Um, but on this video, we're mainly going to talk about um, website edits. So I'm going to show you how to edit text, uh, change out pictures, and just do some basic uh, website edits so that you guys feel comfortable uh, when you need to make changes on your website. So after we log in, like I said, you're taken to your dashboard, but we're actually going to want to go to the page that we want to edit. So I'm going to say we want to make changes on our homepage. So I'm just going to click my church name up here, which will then take me to the homepage. Um, on every page that you have, um, when you are logged in as your administrator, you will have this black bar up here. So this is kind of another way to get anywhere. Uh, from any page, you can also go to new and obviously put, you know, make a new page, add a new sermon, add an event uh, from here as well, um, if you're not on the dashboard. Um, but when we want to edit uh, anything, like let's say I, I need to take out a sentence or add a period or something's changed and I want to make some content changes, um, your instinct would go to edit page. Um, if we do this, uh, your, your theme is using cornerstone or pro. So, um, if you go to edit page, we're just going to be editing, um, a different area. So if you have either cornerstone or pro here, you're going to want to hover here, and then we're going to go to edit page this way. If you do happen to click edit page from here, uh, because initially, obviously that's what we think we're going to close this and it's going to have me edit with pro anyway. So it really won't let you do anything from here. So you're going to go, oh, yes, I just need to edit with Pro. So both places will get you to the same spot. Uh, once this loads, uh, we're in Pro. So we'll kind of see as we scroll down, this is the live version of the website. And then over here is what we call the editor. So let's say that I want to change this content here. As you're on the live version, we're just going to click here. So I'm clicking on this text and it brings up the editor box on the side where then I can obviously click here and here's all of my text. Now this automatically opens an HTML, which is code. And obviously if you're like me, I don't read code. So we're going to go ahead and switch to rich text, which then makes everything look like a word document. So this should look a little more familiar to you. Um, you can make this larger if you want to, so that you can actually see the whole thing. Um, you can, you know, play with this if you need to. Uh, but this is where you can just make uh, updates. So you can type whatever you need to. Updates made here. Okay. Um, Cornerstone Pro, your WordPress site does not auto save anything that you're doing. Okay. So hear that again. It does not auto save. This should make you feel better so that when you are making changes, if you happen to drag and drop something in the wrong spot, if you accidentally delete something, um, nothing is auto saved. Okay. So until you hit this tiny save button down here, nothing is happening. So if you make a mistake, if you do the wrong thing, just close this out and it'll say, Hey, Hey, you didn't save anything. And you can say, good leave. And it won't, it won't make any changes to your website. Um, so let's just say, okay, so we, we went ahead and made our changes, our content changes. Um, maybe you want to make something bold. You're, like I said, you're pretty much treating this like a Word document here. So all of this should look pretty familiar. If you're needing to make this a hyperlink, let's say you want this to link out. We just need to insert link. You'll put your URL here, hit apply. And this is going to make that, you know, it, it highlights it there as you can see so that somebody knows that's a link. Okay. Um, all that stuff's pretty basic. Uh, changing out photos. Um, you're going to click on the photo that you want to change. And you'll see as soon as I clicked on the picture itself, it brought up my little editor over here. Um, if you click the X, it takes away the photo. And you're going to click the check mark because it's asking what do you want it to do. I'm wanting to add a photo, which then it's going to take you automatically to your uh, media library, where if you have a photo back here, you want to switch out, you just choose another one. If it's not here, then you go to upload and you select it from your computer or, you know, click and drag it in here. 
So you can, you know, choose whatever one you're wanting and you just click in, um, excuse me, insert into post. It's got your size here as well. So I think the biggest uh, mistake some uh, clients make when they're changing photos is the, the image size. Uh, your website is not going to automatically resize things for you. Obviously, if you put a giant photo in there, it's not going to take up the whole thing. But it is going to be best if you, you know, go back and maybe look at the picture that was already there. If there was a placeholder that we had added, it'll show you the size up here. It's a 600 by 400. Um, or if it's a, I mean, this is the same. So 600 by four. Some of these photos obviously are in different spots on your website. So they're going to be different sizes. Like this one is a 1200 by 628. Um, if you don't have Photoshop or you don't have um, a picture editor, it's not a big deal. Um, but obviously the larger the photo that you put in here, um, that can affect load times or it obviously can affect the way it looks. If you put a square photo in where we had a rectangle, it's obviously going to look different. So um, just keep that in mind. But uh, you're just going to insert into post and it's going to put it right back in there. OK, so most of the changes that are that we hear that our clients want to make is obviously just, you know, making some content changes. Let's say, you know, we need to go ahead and change what we said about our sermons or we need to update our service times, uh, things like that. But just know you really just click it. Um, something sometimes you'll see this as a headline and you're going to go to edit text and you're going to say, well, this only says email and it has stuff here. So um, some things have subtitles or subheadings that you'll notice. Um, if you ever have questions, obviously you're going to email support at reachrightstudios.com and someone's going to get right back to you and help you out. That's what we're here for. Um, but for these basic things, I think this quick video will kind of make you feel a little bit more comfortable about, um, you know, making some content changes and getting those photos updated on a regular basis. Um, one other thing we hear that clients want to do a lot is um, if they need to add a button or change where a button goes. OK, so let's say, for instance, most of the buttons, if you already have a button somewhere on your website, if you're on a page with a button, the easiest thing to do is to click on that button and just hit duplicate. This is copying everything. The, that way the color is the same. The text is already there. It's already ready to go. Um, and then you obviously can just pick it up and drag it wherever you want it. So it's not going to let you put it somewhere like way over here out in the middle of nowhere. It's going to tell you where, you, where it can go. But let's say I needed to add a third button here. I'm going to drag it there. I'm going to click back on it. And it tells me here, OK, this is the URL it's going to. It's, this one's going to my about page. But let's say I just wanted it to go to, um, you know, YouTube.com. I can obviously copy this URL. Paste it in here. Look here, if you want it to open up in a new tab, then you would click new tab. OK, if there's anything else you want to change about this on your own, if you wanted it to be bigger, you can change the size. OK, this is the font size. You're about to see this get a little larger here. OK, so I'm changing the font size, which obviously changes the button size. OK, uh, if you want to change the color of the button. This is the base color, meaning what it is right here. And then interaction is what it does when I hover over it. So for this one, it's a lighter blue. When I hover over it, it's darker. If you wanted to change that to where you're like, well, you know what? I really want people to see it. So I want a red button then it's going to change it to that color. And then when I interact with it, I want it to be pink. You choose that. So here it's red. When I hover over it, it's a pink. OK. Um, text is actually what the button says. So this is where you change what the button says. OK. Obviously, the shorter the button, the better. No one wants to see a, a button that says too much because, uh, uh, you know, it can it can change the way that it fits uh, in the layout. But obviously, that's up to you. So now you know how to edit a button, uh, how to make a new button and how to move a button. OK, so let's say we want it there. Like I said, it pretty much shows you with this little grid shadow where you can place something. It's not going to let you put something where it's not supposed to go. OK. And again, nothing has saved because I haven't hit save. So this little button here, the little box with the arrow poking out, this is telling me that I want to see it live. So you're going to notice there is nothing that has changed on here. There's no third button. There's no red button down here because I have not hit save. Um, but I'm going to go back there and do that now. 
and you'll see it's going to say awesome it's saved we'll go back here and refresh and now we should see our lovely red and pink button that we put down here in our get in touch section okay um so this was just a pretty basic um how to edit text how to uh duplicate a button now if you let's say you want to make another headline anything that's already here you can just copy you know, I think that's the easiest thing for people because, again, um, everything's already set. So if you wanted to ever look at the elements that are available to you, this is the little cube with the plus sign. You click that and you can see everything that you can possibly add to your site or your page is here. So if you want to add a headline, there it is. But again, I think the easiest thing to do is to grab um, an element that's already here and just duplicate it. So we're just making a copy of it. And then when we click on the one that you copied, then you change what it says here. And then um, this allows you to then, of course, move it wherever you want it. Let's say I wanted a whole nother paragraph. I'm just duplicating it, copied it. Same thing with your text. I can duplicate this paragraph, drag it underneath this headline, and then change it here. Okay, um, so pretty simple. Um, same thing, your background colors and everything are already set from the design, but you are obviously able to change those if you want to. If you wanted to change these colors, you can play around with these here. So um, don't be afraid to get into your website and look at things. Um, we want you guys to be comfortable with what we're doing. So hopefully this was a helpful uh, video.